Hi, I'm Chris, I like to paint things, and today we're going to be going outside of our hobby comfort zone and painting some Caradron Overlords for Warhammer Age of Sigmar, Warhammer Underworlds, all of the above. I've never painted a fantasy really before, but I figured this would be the easiest way to start. You can get this box of Thundrix Profiteers for Underworlds, super cheap anywhere, um, and Space Dwarves kind of a good crossover. They're super easy to assemble, and I did it in an afternoon. They come with these really interesting cards that I will probably never get the use out of, but they have nice artwork and they're cool to look at. So I'm gonna go with some experimenting today and try a really dark theme on these guys. My typical metal paint jobs use these four colors primarily, but at my local game store, I was recommended to try out the Turbo Dork line of metallics. So we're gonna give that a whirl, and we're also gonna try a few new things and really branch out. So I have this steel color and a gold boolean, which looks very nice. We also have some speed paints I got on a discount on a sale online, which is cool. Specifically, we're going to use the grim black over some metal to get that dark metallic look. So I took these guys, built them in an afternoon, which is very, very straightforward. Today I'm going to show you how to get outside of your comfort zone and how I accomplished this. Now as I said, these are super easy to build models, they come on two little sprues, they're monopose, which is fine, um, so I kind of hung out in my living room one night and just put them all together, no messing around, they're very straightforward builds, you can do it while having a drink, honestly. Here they are in better light, and then I put them on my handy dandy uh, pretzel tin lid with some blue tack, we're going to take them outside and spray prime them black. You might recognize this shot, I'm reusing it because I'm very lazy and I think it looks nice. And with everybody spray prime black, we're going to have a good foundation to work up and create some interesting metal tones. Now that we have an even base coat of black, I figured I would do what I always do and just start with an all over dry brush of a dark metallic. We're not experimenting yet, we're using our foundations be able to build off of you know you got to learn the rules in order to break them sort of thing so I'm gonna give Thundric here an all over dry brush of dark metallic gunmetal so that we can build off of that also helps you find all the details and honestly these guys look really good in just metallic if you were more into underworlds and playing games than you are painting miniatures as I am um, you probably just do a black spray paint and a dry brush then you'd at least know what they are so then I took a brighter steel color again process I've already done before and we're just gonna tap the edges and I'm doing it in a weird way I should be going down from the top but I decided to go up who can say all it's doing is adding some metal variation so it's not like crazy in the way it's gonna set the light and a lot of this is gonna get painted over anyway I don't know we're playing around then we're gonna do our first experiment we're gonna take grim black speed paint from the army painter and go all over that metallic to try and give us a really dark, rich steel color from that image before. Now, I've never used anything like this. I started as just regular acrylic paints, but these seem to be all the rage, so, you know, try out the tools that you have. And I like the consistency. It really reminded me of painting black ink on a model, which is a technique I've done to uh, paint leather boots and that sort of thing on Inquisitors. Um, it's a big, drastic change from the regular metallic and I am very psyched with how this looks. Obviously we gotta leave it to dry and see how much it changes, but these black speed paints specifically did not change a whole lot when it dried, which to me was kind of ideal. That's what I wanted. I thought this looked good and we're gonna stick with it. Now with that out of the way, we're gonna turn to our first experimental metallic, which is Turbo Dork Tin Star. The directions say to shake well, obviously, and paint over a black undercoat and a few thin layers. Now I've used this uh, paint before, not this specific one, but Turbo Dork before, and you should definitely do exactly what they tell you to. On the first pass though, that's why I was experimenting, on the first pass, I, I thought it looked very nice, um, as is, but it will definitely require two passes over everywhere we're going to make metallic. It is super vibrant and I am very about the look of this metallic paint from one coat. 
So I'm just picking out some areas to break up all that metal. Not being too careful because we're going to paint over everything else later. You know. We're going to paint over whatever the heck this thing is. I mean, these guys are just blobs of metal. So the key here is going to be to make all that metal work together and not look too strange. Not look too boring and samey. So this is one coat through a paintbrush. You can definitely see some streaks. And then a second coat in some of these areas really, really ties together. And I definitely made the second coat a little thicker than it had to be. I, I, I can be lazy. It happens. Now with base coats done and all of the tin star, I'm really, really liking how clean this metallic is. There's no streaking in it, it just looks fantastic. And even in a dark room, you can still kind of see it. It's very cool. I don't know, big fan of the, the contrast this adds from far away. But I still have to go back in with all my trusty metallic paints and break up all of this monotony. Then I grab the uh, boolean from Turbo Dork, which I know for a fact I did not shake well enough. Shake your paints, folks. I'm very, I just hate it. I don't know what it is. But if I, you mix it up, it comes out really well. And this stuff is very interesting. I put it on very thin on that first half and thicker on this other half, just to kind of see the different consistencies that this paint does. And I'm a lazy painter, as I said a couple minutes ago. I don't mind chewing a little thicker than I'm supposed to to save myself time. Uh, I know it's not the right answer and don't always follow my cues, but I loved this gold paint. Really, you need three to four to probably five thin layers in some areas. It was interesting to put it over black or metallic areas and see what happens, but it, you got to be careful. If you look at that face at the bottom, it definitely pools in the recesses, so I had to be careful, wick some of that away, and do a lot of cleanup after. You can see where one thin coat versus one thick coat how the thick coat looks nicer, but realistically I was more messy with it. it definitely required a little bit more um, touch up. And even on that thick coat we needed to. So do yourself a favor, learn from my experimenting and do a bunch of thin coats. And honestly it's gold, it helps to be sparing with it. Now that we have gold trim on everybody, they're starting to come together. But we gotta paint their clothes and all the boring details. That's just basic stuff. Not a lot of experimenting going on. I just base coated some clothing, but that really makes them come to life. They look like people in suits and not big metallic monsters. 
Now we really, really got to work on these eyes because they are going to also, as I said before, add some life to these characters. So they don't just look like armored sentinels or statues. They kind of look like they have some soul to them. Now, I hate painting eyes, but I really like painting lenses. I find that painting lenses is really satisfying if you can get them to look good. The cool thing on these guys, I went with red eyes, so it's kind of both. After we get all of our eyes passable, we're going to go over with a thin black wash of Nuln oil over all of those tin metallics. They came out super smooth, so that wash really, really pulls away and honestly did not cause a bunch of staining. If anything, it made it more likely to stain on other areas because it ran off of it so fast. So a lot of people gloss varnish before they do this. Again, I, what do I keep saying? I'm a lazy painter trying to experiment. So that null oil, as you can see, added a little bit of differentiation and a little bit of shading, but we're gonna go in with some different colored washes, get those brasses with some glossy Agrax earth shade. I mean, I do this on everything. I'm a big fan of doing three to four colors of washes on the areas that require it. That way things are shaded in the right colors, but everything has shade. I don't want everything to be shaded exactly the same because the shading on a big steel shoulder pad is much different than the subtle, you know, brown tint to the gold that I'm using here. This particular would be um, some Seraph from Sepia. And I just love the way that looks over this gold especially. So, consensus, Turbo Dork Gold, best gold I've used thus far, but it is very, very time consuming. Not a bad thing, but something to note. Now that all of our washes are dry, we gotta go in with some simple highlights. Now, I always kinda highlight metallics by just using a bright silver, and we're not gonna use the Turbo Dork one because that's gonna take seven, eight, nine hundred coats to really show up. But, if you give everything a nice highlight of this on edges pointed towards the sky it really really blocks in all those metallic places and gives them a bit of a highlight so I'm just gonna highlight everything in the silver that way it makes my life easier and I still think it looks nice and I can also see how that silver highlight plays with all of these new metallics being really careful getting all these spots but I weirdly love highlighting and edge highlighting I think I like it more than any other process of the entire painting experience I hate base coating. Just can't stand it. Find it super boring. Washes are fun, but I hate that I have to wait for them to dry. Highlighting adds so much just detail and really makes things look finished, you know. If y'all want to send me your base coated models, I'll just highlight them for days and days. It'll be super fun. I could easily only ever edge highlight or not just edge highlight, but highlight in general and I would be a very happy painter. So after we get Captain Thunder out of the way, he's looking great, but we gotta get the rest of the squad. Same process. So now we have to finish up by basing our models. On the box art, they're standing on these really nice, you know, bright colored fantasy colored rocks. But honestly, I'm gonna use these guys for Grim Dark Future, so they're gonna be a little more grim dank, if you will. They have these cool crystals down here, 
and I really like the vibe of those, but I'm definitely not gonna go for this color scheme. I want the base to blend in, so we're gonna go with obsidian. Not that obsidian, this obsidian. Now, my original plan for obsidian was to use some Turbo Dork Lunar Eclipse, which is a color I've had for years when I first started painting because I thought it was cool. All of my Necrons actually have this on them somewhere. This guy's not some of my best work, but those Turbo Dork Metallics are, are just great. They look awesome on him. It would add to the glassy effect of that, but I decided, you know what, we're going to try and do it ourselves. So I'm going to use this color Violet Shadow from uh, Reaper Paints, and we're going to base coat all of our Obsidian. And I love the tone of this purple. It's something I've been transitioning my Necrons from a GW purple into this because I just like the dark. I like how dark it is and it's really easy to build up. You don't need a lot to highlight it. Now for the crystals on the bottom, I wanted something to contrast the purple. So we want green. Specifically a color that doesn't exist in 40k, Helamite. Which I guess is from when Mount St. Helens erupted? I don't know. I'm not, you know, I'm no geologist. It's just a very nice color. Um, Helotite, Helamite, either way, we're going to paint everything green. Green, I think, will stand out without clashing or contrasting too much in a bad way to take your eye away. It'll help your eye glaze around the model and float and look at all the right places. So I base coated every single gemstone I could find in green, but we're going to break that up later. And most of these I gave one coat because I'm lazy, but some we gave a second coat. Then I went back in with a different green, Elysian green. This way, not every crystal is going to look the same. And even sometimes we just did some of the sides. Now, I've never, ever, ever painted a crystal before. Unless you count, like, Necron energy weapon stuff, I guess. It's not the same thing, though. So then I kind of went in and did this, not randomly, but evenly. Then we follow that up with an even more different green, a Kraken skin from the uh, Army Painter, which is a color I do not get to break out often because it's just so striking. You can't use it everywhere. But we're just going to use this to put a few crystals to look different. I even tried to base coat it. It's a, it's a weird, thin, yellowy green, so it, it's not the best for, you know, doing a full base coat on some stuff. And I definitely went back and touched up a few of these gems for that exact reason. Next, the experimentation continues, and you're going to see me mess up and go back and change something. So I figured maybe it'd be kind of cool if those gems in liquid crystal form were coming out of these spouts. Like we had liquid crystal juice or something, I don't know, if the crystals were being under so much pressure that they kept spewing upward. Cool idea. When you really paint green coming out of weird holes in the ground, it just does not look how you kind of hope it to. It doesn't look like crystal juice. It looks a little, um, nergly, I guess is the nicest way I could put it. But I went around and tried to blend it and tried to make it work. It was a cool idea, I guess. I mean, that's my new headcanon is that these guys take liquid crystals and crush them into real crystals, I guess. I don't know. I'm just rambling at this point. Even my wet blending just could not help this weird effect. It it just didn't look good. It was very um, gross. So what did I do to fix that? I base coated all of that nasty green in black and we're just gonna make it look like lava, magma, lava, I'm not sure which. Either way, we do the same blending technique of those three colors but we do it with a trio of red, orange, and yellow looks real, it looks natural, it looks like an actual thing that exists in the world instead of weird green goo coming out of the ground. And then all of our models can have different personal touches. You know, some of them have green crystals on their bases, some of them have magma. One of them just has an anchor and maybe magma, I don't even know off the top of my head. But I went in with a few different shades of warm tones and did the same thing, just wet blended them. Something I don't do too often is wet blending because I, I don't know, I don't know the proper applications and the times you're really supposed to use it. But if any time, magma, to get realistic looking magma, sure. I just kind of went in with less and less of each color each time. So the biggest, widest layer was the red, then the thinnest layer is this yellow, just streaks of yellow to add the hottest spots in the center of all the magma, lava, whatever you want to call it. I thought it came out uh, halfway decent. But it's not perfect, but I've never ever painted a lava effect before, so I'll take it. Then I went over and 
brought everything on all of the bases together with a dry brush of a ivory color. Very thin ivory color, which over a color like this dark purple, ends up looking like light purple and really brings the stony edges out. So I'm a big fan of how this obsidian came out. Then I did it over the magma, lava, whatever you want to call it again, just to tie that whole base together. Because if it's all dry brush under one color, it becomes more cohesive, at least in my experience. But boy, those look like purple rocks now. All I was after. And I will take that as a W. Take your dubs where you can get them. I even went and dry brushed over the gems with the same ivory color. Same reason to tie everything together and bring out the weird edges on all of those gems. When you bring out those edges on the gems, it gives them that defining crystal shape, which isn't perfect. Then I had an idea to try some object source lighting. Again, we're experimenting, something I've never, ever, ever done before. We're gonna do this really cheap and easy. We're gonna do an upside down dry brush of ivory over just a few spots, just everything that the magma would point at and illuminate. And then we went over that in really, really thin dry brush of red. The reason we do ivory first is to give the red a place to like adhere to, create more of a glow so it's not just one hue, it kind of lights it up. So in my eyes, he looks lit from the bottom. Then I thought for some weird reason, I would wash all of the purple rocks with green shade. Bear in mind, I own Army Painter Purple Shade. I own it. It's a pot of paint I have, and honestly, I wish I had more applications for it. It would have been perfect to shade purple rocks with purple shade. I did shade all of the other colors, the greens and the magma with black, just to break those up, and honestly, I think that adding that black adds the cool areas and helps it look better. And then I was starting to hate the green, so I just chucked null oil into all of those spots. And boy, did that not look very good. That dry, I really did not like the tone of that obsidian, so guess what I remembered that I owned? This bottle of purple tone. So we're gonna go purple tone and we're going to rewash all that obsidian. And even though the green shade was on there, didn't really matter. This stuff is super thick, which is why I've rarely had a good reason to use it. But boy, does that look ace. I am a huge fan of how this obsidian is coming out. And I know the purple tone will dry much, much softer. But G Willikers, Batman, that looks very good. Then... For some reason, I decided to gloss varnish all of these gems so they had a little bit of a shine to them. Now, I'll be honest, sometimes at the wrong angle, it just looks like there's like weird green alien eggs on the ground, which at this point also works. Like I said, I'm gonna be playing these guys in a sci-fi setting just because I don't own any other H of Sigmar stuff and they tie in very well. Alien eggs on the ground is fine with me. I did gloss varnish the lenses, which I feel like I don't need to do, but I like to do just because, you know, it's good practice to see how it reacts with my paint job. And from there, you can really see my attempt object source lighting. And with all of that done, I was left with this.
All right, thank you so much for watching. I have been Chris. Once again, I like to paint things. Um, keep experimenting, keep trying new stuff. That's the biggest takeaway from this video. These are some of my newest favorite models in my collection, just because they look so different to everything else I've done. Does that mean I'm gonna start painting Fantasy Age of Sigmar stuff? Probably not, but who can say? Maybe I'll build some more uh, space robot dwarf fellas and duke them out in Grim Dark Future. You can bend rules however you want. You can do painting however you want. Just play around and see what sticks, man. That being said, uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good nonsense. And I will see you next time. That sounded like a question. I will see you next time. Have a great night.